We're going to talk about entrepreneurship today. Many of you know I've been an entrepreneur only for about two or three years. So if you are in that same place, that place of, man, you're, you want to make a decision to take that leap to do something new, this is the day to tune in. Listen, we always talk about the senior referral business, but we also talk about establishing a six-figure home business. And that's what we're going to do today. So Justin, Justin Weeks is on today, man. Thank you so much for being on. Glad to be here, Matt. Man, and Justin is a... Um, a U.S. Army combat veteran, uh, 11 years, law enforcement officer, police SWAT operator. Man, is that right? Yes, state. I was a state police SWAT operator. Louisiana police. Yeah. One of my favorite movies, man. I love watching SWAT. I could never, I mean, I, I couldn't do it physically, but man, just the, knowing you were part of that is pretty awesome. And so also a full-time entrepreneur. And uh, so, Justin, go ahead. Tell us a little bit about your story. <clears throat> and as you do that, what I'm going to do, guys, in full disclosure, I'm going to go back here and I got to hit my video going on because we had some technical difficulties last week uh, with the uh, software. And I don't want that to happen with Justin coming on. So go ahead, Justin. Tell us a little bit about, if you would, who you are. And um, man, I'd love to get to know you. Absolutely. Hey, guys. So I'm 38 years old. I live in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Uh, growing up, I was the oldest of five children and I always felt that uh, sense of I needed to protect my little brothers, little sisters. So I don't know if that had anything to do subconsciously with me going into the military, into law enforcement. Um, but I was I was a Lake Charles. I live in uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana. So I was a Lake Charles city police officer for three years. But then once I left in the military, came back, I served in Iraq and Baghdad. Uh, I was an Army infantry sergeant. I was a Humvee gunner in Baghdad. I uh, came back. I joined the Louisiana State Police. Uh, there I taught the defensive tactics. <laughs> and I'm a SWAT operator. Enjoyed my job thoroughly. Uh, but a friend of mine who I served with in Iraq introduced me to uh, a business concept, entrepreneurship, a home-based business. Those things that never work. Um, this one in <laughs> a gold mine. And, uh, and you know, I, I got really excited about the potential that it carried and um, dove into personal development, started building this business. And Long story short, you know, it changed my life at the risk of sounding very cliche uh, in less than two years, was able to walk away from my job and, and have been a full time entrepreneur now almost six years. Man, that, that, I mean, number one, thank you so much for your service. Number one, that's very close and dear to my heart. My son's in the Navy um, now on deployment right now. So it's very close to my heart. But thank you so much for your service. Number one. Yeah. And number two is a remarkable story. Uh, just, I know he kept that real brief, but man, just in terms of just taking that step and, you know, one thing that, uh, I've read about Justin, he's, he's got a quote that says we are God's highest form of creation and capable of absolutely anything, man, Justin speak on that a little bit. I mean, are we truly capable of doing anything? You know, I believe so. Yeah. Uh, I believe so that, you know, the Bible doesn't say, you know, with God, small things are possible. He said all things are possible. And Woo! if you think. <laughs> If you think about what we as human beings have accomplished uh, throughout history, I mean, it's pretty remarkable. And I think the, you know, I read a book called The Magic of Thinking Big by Dr. David Schwartz. And, you know, he basically says the only limits that we put on ourselves are the one or the only limits we have are the ones we put on ourselves by the size of our thinking. And it takes just as much energy to think big as it does to think small. And um, I mean, I just think that whatever it is that we want to do, uh, we, we can accomplish if we really focus and, and, and put our mind to it and, and work hard. We, we'll surprise ourselves. I, I believe that our God given potential is much higher than most people you know, think it is. <clears throat> you know, and I, I, I totally agree with you. And I we were talking off camera about my story a little bit. And I really believe there was some untapped potential within me. And it just took years. And we're going to talk a little bit about some struggles that people will go through uh, as a potential entrepreneur, uh, starting your own business or, you know, starting that new hobby or whatever it may be, but taking that new challenge, it is some kind of, you know, a little bit of gut wrenching fear or some, something holding us back. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today, but I totally agree with you, man. I think we're capable of doing anything. I mean, you're, you're a prime example of that. You're a, a wonderful testimony of just how God has brought you along. And this guy, I'm telling you, I haven't known Justin that long, but I mean, he's extremely humble. Uh, he's so appreciative of life and what God has done in his life and <clears throat> what he's accomplished. And just that itself just speaks volumes to me. But, you know, Justin, I'd 
little bit about I know a little bit I know about you is that you and I were seen far as being a student. I was a daydreamer too. I know you said that like you're in school, you'd be daydreaming a little bit. Um, but today, man, your dreams have become a reality. And what was the key, if you could, or maybe there's a couple of keys to unlock your success? You know, it's funny because I did mention that in my story about <laughs> being a daydreamer. And I think I think it comes down to, you know, what we are believing, what we are imagining. I think in life we get what we picture and what we expect, not necessarily what we want or what we need. Um, maybe what we deserve by who we become, you know, you know, I've always heard, you know, you become what you think about, if you will, Earl Nightingale, the stranger secret, right? You become what you think about. And in all the classic success books, I mean, whether it's Napoleon Hill, think and grow rich, he says, you know, um, what the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve, uh, as the man thinketh, James Allen, I think that was published in 1902. But I mean, even the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So as we, what we think about, we become. And I think the more that we, uh, you know, dream and, and whether it's daydreaming, whether it's writing down our goals, whether it's, you know, uh, just believing bigger that we can achieve. I think that drastically increases our chance of achieving those things because mm -hmm. it's what we expect to happen. Um, Henry says, Henry Ford says, you know, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're probably right. And, um, so I've always just been a big dreamer and expected things to happen. And they've just, they've happened. Um, and, and I'll never stop dreaming bigger and thinking bigger because, you know, like we just, like we just mentioned, there's no limit to, to what we can accomplish. So. I, I tell you what, that, that faith element, that imagination element, whatever it is, my audience out there, you're tapping into, that is one of the keys that Justin just said. And I completely agree in my short time as an entrepreneur, you got to believe you can, you know, and you talk about scripture, man, I pray Ephesians 3.20, I can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can think or imagine. I mean, if I could think or imagine, God can do it, right? It's just, it's unbelievable, that mindset, because if you don't have that mindset, Justin, what, you think that hinders somebody being an entrepreneur if they don't have that mindset? Absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's, I think it's deeper and, you know, it's speaking of that uh, scripture, you know, as a man thinketh in his heart. And I think the reason it says in his heart is because our emotions are what gives mm -hmm. those thoughts life. And I think when you can get emotionally, when you can emotionally get behind something emotionally, mm -hmm. you're much more likely to, to put the action towards it. You know, I think our, our, our thoughts, actually our programming, you know, what we listen to, what we read, who we associate with, but those thoughts, lead to our feelings and then those feelings mm -hmm. what lead to the actions then what lead to the results which then reinforce our thoughts so i think that uh, yeah mindset the inner world is going to always determine the outer world so what we believe what we think what we feel um ultimately will determine how we act and then the results that take place definitely hey um let's talk to the person justin that <clears throat> we talked off camera you know, and I, and I mentioned just a few minutes ago, too, I've been entrepreneur only for two or three years. There was a stretch in my life about 10 years. I knew there was something greater within me. And now I mean greater guys that I can do more than somebody else. Just I wanted to do more than I was or what I was currently doing for myself. But I wanted to step out and do certain things as an entrepreneur, start my own business. And I would kind of put a toe in the water and it'd be like, mm, I don't know if it's warm enough yet. And I pull it right back, you know, and and I know people in my audience are doing that. They're kind of like, I want to take that leap. Okay, Justin, I believe you. I'm going to change my mindset. I know there's more into I, I talked to a lady that I'm coaching. Uh, so if you're listening out there, I won't mention your name. But, you know, she mentioned a couple of weeks ago that when she goes to bed at night, she can just think all what she, you know, she's dreaming about. And she just gets, oh, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And then she gets out of bed the next morning going, oh, gosh, I'm scared to death. I don't think I can. You know, so people that are struggling with fear, what? What would you say to someone who wants to take that leap as an entrepreneur, but a little bit afraid that it may not work out? I mean, they don't want to lose and leave that security blanket. So what would you say to someone like that? You know, I'd say if, if God put those those beliefs in your heart or those desires in your heart, then they're already yours. You just got to go get them. And I think one day, you know, when we're laying on our deathbed, I think I don't believe we're going to regret the chances that we took. I think we're going to regret the chances that we didn't take. I think we're going to. Absolutely. Regret the things that we didn't do, not the things we did. I mean, yeah. life's so short. I mean, if you think about how old all of us are right now, if you're listening to this, I mean, 
how quickly your life, <clears throat> excuse me, how your, quickly your life has passed up to this point and how much time you actually have left. I mean, why not go for it? I mean, mm. why not? I mean, if you, if you think about it, what do you have to lose? Um, nothing, honestly. I mean, you, you have to, or you're going to regret that you didn't. I'd rather say, oh, well, then what if all day long? You, you, you're, I mean, you're hitting home with me because, you know, I do regret. I don't regret doing what I did three years ago to start our business. I regret not starting sooner, mm -hmm. realizing what I know now. And I know it's challenging and, it's, you know, these negative thoughts come our way and we get around maybe the wrong people that say, you know, certain things because they've given up on their dreams. So we should do the same. Right. Well, I do regret. I regret I should have started sooner. So, I mean, I, I would encourage anyone out there, man, if you're thinking about being an entrepreneur, starting your own thing, go for it. And uh, there's many different ways you can do it. But, um, you know, one of the biggest obstacles I've heard people say, and I still hear today, especially when we're talking about the senior referral academy or they're going to start something new with a different business. They go, man, I don't have two things. I don't have money and I don't have time. And they go, and I go okay, but it's your dream. And this is what blows me away. We're talking about their dream and they're giving me excuses why they can't accomplish their dream. Now, that might not be an excuse to them. It might be reality. But what would you say to someone who says, man, I just don't have the time. I don't have the money, any of that kind of stuff to do what I want to do. First of all, let's address the time thing, because that to me, <laughs> that, that's, um, it's like saying I don't have enough time is like the adult version of my dog ate my homework. It don't even make sense to me because everybody has the exact same amount of time, 168 hours in a week. So to say I don't have the time is not even a, a relevant statement. So I, it, I would much prefer someone to say, you know, I don't believe in this enough to make it a priority mm -hmm. or I don't believe in myself enough to, to put my time towards this or I feel like my t time would be better spent somewhere else. But to say I don't have the time is silly because everybody has the exact same amount of time. Now, the money mm -hmm. – same thing. I, I think it's never a time issue nor a money issue. It's always a belief issue. Um, if I told somebody like my Escalade outside, I, I'm not trying to be yeah. anxious here. I'm just sure, like, sure. have a nice vehicle. If I told someone, I'll tell you what, I'll sell you that 2019 Escalade for $3,500. If you can come up with the money by tomorrow, they're going to find the money because they mm -hmm. believe that the value's there. Right. Yep. So it's never, or if someone said, let's, let's be a little bit even more, I get a little deeper. Your child needs a heart transplant. It costs $10,000 and has to have it by the end of the week or he's going to die. Are you not going to find $10,000? You're like, ah, well, I just can't find $10,000. Just no. I mean that the, the, with the why is strong enough. If the, if the reasoning is strong enough, the how part will work itself out. It comes back just like the mom lifting the car off her child. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, Think that she took her phone out, looked up how what's the proper way what's the proper way to deadlift a car? No, she didn't think about that. She just when the why is so strong that the how part works itself out. She got lifted the car off her child. Now once her child was free, she probably couldn't go back and lift that car up again. It's not that her muscles went away; it's just the desire wasn't there, that the reasoning wasn't there. So I think the the reasons come first, the results come second. The belief comes first. You, then you make time a priority. Then you make you find the money. And and I think that's what it is. Either they don't want it bad enough or they don't believe in it strong enough to make the time or find the money. Yeah, I, I, I could agree with you more. I, you know, and 10 years ago, you and I having this conversation, I probably would go, all right, I'm buying in on the time aspect. But the money may be like, oh, I don't know. I can never get enough. But you you're hitting the nail on the head. With things that are so important to us, the example of the kid in the hospital, whatever it may be, <clears throat> we're going to find the money. <clears throat> we're going to go out there and we're going to be resourceful and get that money somehow, some way. Asking people, we're, we're not going to be afraid of making phone calls at that point, right? If right. we need 10 grand to help our kids survive and we don't have it, I'm getting on the phone. I'm calling family, friends, anybody I can. Doctors, can you, you know float me some you know, make it less than 10 bucks, $10,000, whatever it is, but you're going to become resourceful. And um, so it, it, you're right. It comes down to not wanting it bad enough. So <clears throat> what do you say to a person that says, man, I got, I got this big dream 
but you, you know the underlying thing is they don't want it bad enough. They're using money and time as a, a kind of a, a thing that's there, but they're really not. They don't yeah, want it bad enough. It's an excuse, and then but instead they should be using that as the exact reason. And I was there. You know, I was mm -hmm. absolutely in that spot, and I had no time. I had no money. When I looked at this, my son, see, my son has autism, uh, has high functioning autism, and I was never home. I worked 12 hour shifts with the state police, ended up becoming a SWAT operator. I was getting called out. I was training. I was driving to Baton Rouge two and a half hours to teach defensive tactics. I was never home. Um, and I was, I was, so I wasn't as present of a father as I wanted to be, nor was I providing like I wanted to. And you know, when I saw this business, um, you know, I, I the, the business that I started, I almost used those as excuses. I don't have any time. I don't have any money. But instead of using those as excuses, why not to do this? I use those as the very reason that I should do it because I knew this. I knew, Matt, that the next six years of my life was going to be exactly like the last six unless I did something different. And, you know, I said, maybe this is God opening up a door, something intuitively kind of like yourself. I felt like I was meant to serve on a bigger scale. I wanted to expand my territory. I wanted to make a difference. It was more about working for significance than just success. But I also knew that uh, what I was doing wasn't working. Uh, yeah. I was serving, but something was missing and I wasn't seeing my children. I wasn't earning uh, the amount of money I wanted to, to provide the way I wanted to and give the way I wanted to give. So instead of using those as excuses, guys, maybe those are the very reasons that you should do something different. Powerful, man. Powerful, buddy. Man, you're right. You keep going down that road doing the same thing. You, you can't expect different results, right? We all know that. But yeah. it's just you lived it out in terms of you. <clears throat> you know, it's going back to that regret. I mean, you said a few minutes ago, it's so powerful. I, I don't want to regret. I'm 51. You know, I, I, I heard... Um, I forgot who it was now on Ed Milet. I, I watch Ed Milet a lot. And he had someone on that this guy was like, hey, he's about my age. He's like, he's 51 years old. He said the average person lives like 78. So mm -hmm. I got like this big of a window to do this much stuff. You know, he says, I ain't got time to live in regret and, you know, hope that I'm going to do it. I'm going to pursue and do it. So I just want to challenge you guys out there today to, man, don't allow money and time or anything else to be an obstacle. Uh, to, can Later. I say something about that? Yeah. Matt, um, and because Ed my list, the one who said this, it made me think about it. Another thing that holds people back from doing things like this is they're worried about what other people are going to think about them. Mm. And I heard Ed my list say this. He said, you know what? He said, people that spend their whole life worrying about what everyone else is going to think about them when they die, nobody remembers them anyway because they spent their whole life worrying about what everyone was going to think. So sometimes it's, it takes, you know, stepping out observing the masses doing the opposite because if the masses are doing it, it's an average action anyway, which isn't going to yep. bring you an extraordinary result. So quit worrying about what everybody else thinks. And I mean, they never, they never built a statue of a, of a critic. I've never seen a successful hater. Uh, <laughs> right, right. You know, and you know, sometimes the only, the only people that are special are the ones that do something a little different. So don't be afraid to step out and, and go against the grain. So I hope that helps. Hey, Justin, I'll tell you what, you've convinced me now as a, a viewer of this show today, I'm, hey, I'm going to lay down the money, the time. I'm not going to have any excuses. Now, walk me through what is a typical day for an entrepreneur? Because I think there's this fallacy out there. The reason I ask this question that people think they can just sit around in their underwear all day and, and get wealthy or they can wake up late and, you know, cut out work three hours. I've got my own time. I'm my own boss now. I tell you, ever since I've been doing this, Justin, I have worked harder than I ever worked in my life. I get up earlier. I work later. It's rewarding. Now, don't misunderstand me. I am not complaining. If, if I wanted to, I could go back in the traditional workforce and, and, and go get a job doing something. But I love what I do, but it does require a lot of time. So kind of walk me through the person that says, okay, I'm ready to go, man. I'm laying down the money. Forget the time. But talk to me. What is the commitment level for an entrepreneur? For sure. And I think that's a, a huge misconception as far as home-based business and some things of that nature. A lot of people get that lottery ticket mentality and they're like, man, I've been doing this three weeks and I'm not rich. It must not work, you know? And I think that's, <laughs> I think that's why it gets the stigma that it does sometimes. But, but you know, it does take a level of self-discipline. You know, you can't just sit on your couch, eat Cheetos, watch Netflix and, and make a lot of money. Although 
like you said, it's very fulfilling. I'd rather work 168 hours for myself doing mm-hmm. what I love than, than 40 hours a week working for, for someone else and, and building someone else's dreams. So what I would say is it, you, sometimes you have to start uh, like what I did with a home-based business, you know, network marketing, direct sales is I was still working full time as a state trooper when I started this. So whether it was fitting in an hour a day or a, a few hours a week, it's about being intentional about how you spend those hours. I mean, an hour a day, guys, if you think mm-hmm. about it, the power of an hour, if you will, um, if you spend an hour a day doing something at the end of the year, that's more than nine 40 hour work weeks that you've spent throughout that year, just an hour a day, 365 hours by mm-hmm. 360 hours is not 40 hour work week. So, um, you'd be surprised how a little bit of time spent consistently will compound over, you know, a duration of, of time. So, but it's being intentional. It's about, Hey, turning off all distractions. This thing right here can be major distraction. Turn off your notifications, get focused, write down what you want to do. Very, be very specific and use that time wisely. And it's not about being busy as it is about being productive. There's a big difference between movement and progress. So make sure you're ne- moving the needle forward as far as income producing activities and find a mentor that can that can guide you in that direction. Hey, what's the best use of my time during this three hours I have this week? And you'd be surprised how much time people actually have throughout the week when they block out the things that aren't necessary or delete the things that, you know, don't have an impact in their life uh, positively. Um, so, or if that may, productively. Makes sense. Yeah, I, I think I heard, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think I heard Peter Vuk say that. I think I've been following him now for about three years or so, and um, I think he's the one I first uh, heard about, at least for me, to turn off those notifications. He's and, the same person I learned it from. He's a very close friend of mine. We actually wrote a book together. and uh, he, he's, he's. So you heard him say that first too then, because that's, that's where I heard it. Yep, yep. He's the one that taught me that about just getting in the zone, turning off notifications, uh, being very intentional, and uh, he's taught me a lot. Actually, he's, a, he's, he's yeah, the, the only one I'm trying to get, and this is I've done this ever since I heard Peter. Well, soon thereafter, heard him say that I turned off the Facebook notifications. I turned off a lot of other notifications. The only one I haven't turned off yet because it's hard for me being a referral agent is the text notifications because I get I get my leads that way sometimes. So that one's a little bit more difficult, but um, it, it's it's so freeing though. Going back to what your point is we're not allowing that device <clears throat> to dictate what we do. We right. got more of our goals. We got more of our objectives in line and we're doing what we're called to do versus going, Oh no, I got to respond to every little thing. Right. Cause I'll tell you when I used to do that, every little thing, phone call, email and allow other people and things to dictate my schedule. It was those days. Inevitably I get to the end of the day going, what did I accomplish today? Mm-hmm. I know I work 10 hours, but I don't feel like I accomplished anything. It was those days. We are reactive versus proactive. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we are reacting to external circumstances and being pulled in different directions. We lose control over the things that we were intending to do throughout the day. So if you write things down, non-negotiable things at the beginning of the day and say, these are the things I'm going to accomplish and am going to accomplish no matter what. They're non-negotiable and get those things knocked out first, whether mm-hmm. that going to have the most, uh, you know, financial impact on the day, uh, you know, you get those things knocked out first. Then after that, you know, it's not as crucial if you are distracted or have to react yep. to things. <clears throat> Absolutely. Well, hey, Justin, talk to us a little bit because we talked about what it looked like in the hours and during the week of a new entrepreneur. Dude, you are not a new entrepreneur. You, I mean, guys, I don't know if you notice or not, he is a top earner in his company. This is a big deal. And, um, and I don't like just harp on finances all the time, but you know, it's kind of like when you play sports, I mean, you, you keep stats. I mean, it's just like who's winning, who's losing. And, you know, and it's just, it's the way I was raised. I mean, I played basketball, baseball and, and football growing up and that's just kind of who I am, but you are a top earner, Justin, your, your company. Talk to us not only your, your level of commitment. I think we can understand that, but just what does it take to be successful like you are in your industry? You know, quite honestly, I, I think it comes down to you, your, who you are and working on yourself. You know, Jim Rohn says work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Working on your job will make you a living. Working on yourself will make you a fortune. And building a business, entrepreneurship, it, I mean, it's an emotional roller coaster. So I think 
working on yourself, your mindset, and it has a lot to do with it. Also, you know, who you become is what you're going to attract. You know, if you're working with other people, you know, they're assessing you and they're like, whether they're doing it consciously or subconsciously, they're saying, Hey, do, you know, do I want to be like this person? Uh, you're, or do I want to come across to the world? Like this person's coming across to the world to me. So it's like, you know, you're attracting people into your business or repelling them from your business by who you are. And mm. so I think it's very important to work on yourself daily and don't compare yourself to other people. That's another thing Peter Vuk taught me, you know, comparison is the root of all misery. Just be a better you than you were yesterday. Be stronger tomorrow than you were today, whether that's spiritually stronger, physically stronger, intellectually stronger. As long as you're working on yourself daily, you're always going to become better. And, you know, Jim Rohn says, if you want things to get better, you have to get better. Don't wish it was easier, wish mm -hmm. you were better. And so I think that's the biggest, uh, biggest, most important piece of the puzzle as far as building a business, entrepreneurship is yourself, working on you. I, I could agree with you more, Justin. One thing we did, I probably established it about a year, year and a half ago. So it hasn't been that long. Uh, we made a commitment, my wife and I, that <clears throat> whatever money comes in, there are certain ways we allocate it. And then you got you know, your tithe, your taxes and everything else. But <clears throat> we always invest in us personally and invest in our business because we want our own lives to grow. And we feel like as we grow, our business will benefit and then as we invest back in our business, our business grows, other people will benefit as well. So you're right. You've got to constantly invest in yourself. And if you don't, and you just you want to get caught in that rat race of just doing the work and not getting any better. And, um, you know, and I think Peter Boog actually said this. He said, you know, people say they have 20 years of experience. They really have 20, you know, one year experience. Years repeated 20 back back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. Well, hey, let's get back to someone out there that says, hey, OK, I, I bought into all this. I really want to get involved. And, and Justin, I really want you to speak on a little bit about what you do personally. Okay. I said, Guys, I want you to hear about this. We talk about establishing a six figure home business. It's not just being a senior referral agent like I am. There's multiple, many different uh, avenues out there to establish a home business. Justin is doing one very successful what he want, what he's doing. And I want him to speak on that. But. At the same time, you're doing that, Justin. Speak to the person that goes, okay, I want to do this. I'm not lacking money. I'm not lacking time. Man, I'm just not a good salesperson. I'm just not good in front of people. How do I overcome that one? Yeah. Well, those, you know, two, two different things there. Uh, being good at sales is, uh, or feeling like you're good at sales, that's that's a good thing. You know, no, first of all, no one wants to be sold anything. Right. Uh, you know, anything you chase will run from you. People, want what they can't have. Um, you know, those two things to remember. So it's just like asking a girl out, you know, a lot of people think that they can convince and talk people into this. Nobody wants to be convinced. Nobody's going to, you know, wants to be talked into or persuaded to do something. So feeling like you're good at sales is not necessarily, uh, something that you need to have. Uh, honestly, I think, well, for instance, what I do is it's more of a sifting and sorting process. It's kind of like, referring a good movie or a good restaurant, you're educating, sifting and sorting. Um, it's, it's a very attractive concept that, you know, it has to do with saving money in areas you're spending already. And, and it has an income opportunity, obviously. Uh, and just to, you know, fully disclose that it's all based off the effort you put forth. Now, you know, I will say that, you know, the cool thing about a business like this is you do scale and network and build a team. So you may not feel like you're great at something or have the time or good with people, but you may know a couple of people that are. Well, mm -hmm. the cool thing about building a team is you benefit from the effort of that team. Now, anybody on your team can still out earn you that there's a, always that misconception of the guy at the top is making all the money type of deal. You know, I've out earned lots of people that have been in longer than me and that are above me, if you want to call it that for lack of better words, but um, everyone's business is its own entity. But what's powerful is the ability to leverage your income. A lot, 95% of people per Robert Kiyosaki trade time for money. It's a linear income. And those 95% of people, whether they're employed or self-employed, control about 5% of the wealth. But that other 5%, the ones that have a leveraged income, whether they're leveraging their time with the efforts of a team or others, or leveraging their money, you know, investments, passive income, but being able to build a residual or passive income by 
leveraging that income. Those 5% of people that have a leveraged income control 95% of the wealth. So once mm. I understood that concept, I wanted to build something that was scalable that I could leverage my time. And this was a great opportunity that, you know, the business that I'm in, um, which I'd be happy to share with anybody if they wanted to get with me individually. Mm. I am in the process of expanding right now and have a lot of room in my time to work with some new people and, um, and have some, some, some goals that, um, in order for me to reach, I would have to help some other people make a significant amount of, of money. And I'm, I'm willing to do that. So if you do have someone out there that is looking for something, I would be, I would love to meet with them, talk to them, see if, if they're a fit or if this is a fit for them um, and, and go over that. But, you know, don't feel like you have to be the magic because mm -hmm. anything that's scalable, whether it's buying a franchise, if you buy a McDonald's uh, or join a business like this, there's systems in place. And that system is what duplicates and scales. Um, so if you can learn that system, which is any good business is going to have a system, then it's it's scalable, it's duplicatable, and you can build a team. Um, and then law of averages, safety and numbers come into play, and, and it just it works if you're just willing to, to do the work. And uh, if you're coachable, not they're not going to lay down, not quit on your family. Anybody, I truly believe anybody can be successful. Um, show me your mentor, I'll show you your future. You know, get a good mentor. Uh, have a good system in place, be willing to work. But the most, the most important thing is that desire in your heart. If you have a gut burning desire, you're willing to work, you're coachable and you don't quit. You don't give up too quickly. Um, hundred percent. I believe you'll be successful. Man, powerful. Justin, how do they get a hold of you? My friend? I mean, there's somebody out there probably thinking about, Hey, I, I want to be the next Justin weeks, brother. I want to go out and do the things that you do. How can I get a hold of you? Talk to me. Yeah. So if uh, Facebook, um, facebook.com forward slash Justin K weeks, my middle initials K. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll give my phone number out. I'll, I'll share my cell phone number. Just text. Um, I'll probably, I'll probably won't answer if I don't recognize the number. Um, That's what my, I did. <laughs> my personal cell phone number is, is 337 area code 274 3896. And uh, reach out to me. And, you know, if I don't answer, leave a voice message. If the mailbox is full, just just shoot me a text. Let me know. Hey, I saw you on Matt's uh, stream and, um, you know, I'd love to talk to you more. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'd be happy to, to talk to you and see, you know, if we can work something out, because I'm, I've always had a passion to serve. And that's what makes this whole thing mm -hmm. fulfilling, rewarding, as you said, is is the ability to impact someone else's life in a positive way work for significance, not just success, make a difference. That's what we're called to do, um, I believe, and leave a legacy and leave our footprint on the earth. So I'm all about it, man. Man, Justin, thank you so much, my friend. I really appreciate it. It's, uh, it was a joy to have you on this morning, you guys. And I'm going to talk to you in a second when I let Justin go. But it's um, I really appreciate you coming on, you giving us your valuable time, your input, your wisdom, your knowledge in this area. Uh, this guy, I'm telling you, you, you need to connect with him. Unbelievable mover and shaker. And you, you need to, if, if you don't like what he's doing, tap into how he does it and then duplicate that somewhere else. I don't know. Brother, appreciate you so much, Justin. Thanks a lot, man. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. You bet. Take care. You guys, there is Justin Weeks. I really appreciate him and I appreciate you guys. And, and I understand fully, like I said earlier, that you may be in that area where, you in that place, you want to do something, but you're just not sure how or what and all that. And you don't get lost in all the facts and, and, and just the how to's right away. Man, make that decision in and of yourself. You're just going to do it. Take that step of faith and just start applying and start getting one question after another answered, getting one thing accomplished at a time. Get with someone like Justin Weeks. Reach out to him, myself, others that you can trust, you know, that's going to provide value to you. That's going to, you're going to be able to grow. Uh, so until till next time, we'll see you tomorrow. And uh, thanks so much for being on today.